Welcome back. It's the 2019 Disc Golf Pro Tour. Championships, the quarterfinals, MPO, out here at Hornet's Nest in Charlotte. Shout out to everybody who did work on this course to make it look so good on short notice. Got to give the Charlotte Club props. It's been awesome. Drew Gibson, on fire. Seven out of his last eight. Six down for the tournament, or for the round, I should say. Scores are going to reset. One under for Freeman, Frescura, Hannum. Even. All three of those players are going to have to start putting the pedal to the metal. Holes are running out. Here's number 10. You got to fly through that gap. That's tough. Make this turn. Playing, I believe, to the short basket. The ladies are playing to the long basket as a par four. Drew Gibson starting off on this back nine. And just didn't flip up enough. Maybe a little bit high for that line. Here's Reed going forehand. That's a pretty good feed right there. That should be at least within circle two, I would guess, by that angle. Hannum getting a little wide with it. And that's the danger. That angle that he threw was really good. The problem is where you want to throw it means you're going to hit the middle tree. And where you late release it hits that right tree. Let's see if Freeman can shred this line. Let's see if you can shred this line. That's some of the worst sound that you can hear. This is when you're playing in North Carolina and you can't necessarily see what tree it hits. You just know that one of the 6,000 trees at some point, like 200 feet in front of you, you hit one of them. Drew with a significantly better lie than either of his card mates that went before him. He's going to get out of this with a three. Just a little bit of a trap hole. Hannum's got to float one down there. Save his bogey. Joel. Maybe he'll hit this line. Come on, Joel. Gosh, he's still up on that left side in that rough. It's just tough to get out of here. Here's Reed. Looks like a forehand roller from an obstructed... Yeah. There was a very small angle to make that shot work. Yeah, there is a grade up. Well called by the spectators. This is Joel, at least for bogey. Oh. Three disc heights too short. AKA, not a whole lot. Good putt there. Under 400. I wouldn't say the most difficult hole on this course when you stand on the tee pad and look at it, but sure did eat up the lead card here. Three for Drew, pair of fours, Austin and Reed, Joel, five. That one really hurts. He fought his way back to even and then took the double bogey. Here's another par four. This one very scorable if you can get off the tree well. You just need to have this hallway shot. You can kind of see it's almost like nostrils, right side, left side. 
leading up to the top and a little bit of the flat spot on kind of this mound. I don't know if it's a hill, it's a mound. Drew's played that correctly. You actually you don't want to turn it over too, too much unless you just can't throw that other kind of shot if you're a righty. I mean, lefty, go ahead and swing it around that corner, big fella. You know. Use your natural left-handed gifts there. Or take this forehand line like Hannum's doing. He's been working on it. He's starting to get it dialed here. Oh, sit down. Joel finding the line for his style of forehand. A little more of a flat release. Again, all of these guys should be able to attack here. Yeah, probably the toughest thing about these shots is just making sure you're not right up on the tree. So you read here, between the trees, you know if you swing your arm out, you're going to be okay. You don't always know that on your second shot on the 11th. And you can see the difference. Puts it right to the pin when he can. Here's Joel. Medium difficulty on the lie. Patent pending sidearm stance. He doesn't love it, but it's good enough to give him the look. Hand him. That's a ball. Oh, there's... That's an argued call with the umpire. You think that one's a strike. Ump says ball. Got it. That's a strike. You guys get it? I'm talking about baseball. Anyway. Good par clean up. Should be par. Or excuse me. Fresh, you're a birdie. Drew par. Had the discs and the shirts backwards. 12th. This one's a beast. Check this thing out. 650 feet. Or 651 if you want to ace it. This narrow fairway. Just bending to the right a little bit. And then back left once again. Classic. Turn one way, then the other way fairway. But it's a subtle turn, which means if you're going to throw high-speed discs that like to get left or right at the end of the flight, you're bringing a tree kick into play. Straight plastic is great here. Great kick. Great job. Look at this. You throw the understable hyzer flip, you get the gentle bounces back to the fairway. Joel's looking for that right move. Get all of it. Great shot. Wow. As beautiful as that shot was, he's still going to have a semi-obstructed bit of footing there. Drew says, this one's going to hyzer flip better. Again, Drew, that's not the worst. It's just not the worst place to be compared to where you could be on this hole. It's not on the fairway. But it's not terrible. Oh, and that just went violently to the right. As soon as that flipped over, just started diving. Trouble for Hannum. Frescura here, second shot. 
I was looking good till it hit some foliage. Drew looking for a forehand punch shot. About as good as you can do it from there. That's a situation where you just look and say, I'm going to throw it, snap it hard, and just see what happens. Austin, no way. Forehand roller. Keep going. Who? He still got a better look than I ever thought he was going to have out of that spot. And it would have been great if that tree wasn't so rude to him at the very end. That's one where he probably deserves to be about half the distance from the pin that he is. And Joel. You can see him behind the tree there. Drew with the Hail Mary. See if you can steal a birdie. Didn't quite work. Reed here, long birdie. Just cuts in front of it. Almost got it. Hannum, somehow, to grab this stroke on his card mates. Wow. What a fantastic shot there. I guess we're showing par for him. Just double checking with you, disc here. Yep, that is a par. We must have missed his shot. Or Jamie can't count, one of the two. Joel can't count on that putt. He's just having a rough go of it today. It's such a high pressure format. Just a high pressure format when you have the holes are running out. You don't get to build upon any momentum you started. It's all self-contained. Shoot the score because it resets. I, I know that doesn't sound like such a big thing, but these players spend months and months and months playing a patient game plan saying okay I'm not in position after the first round that I want to be here's where my game has to stay the same here's where it can change and and you know vary it up to bring something new to the table but in this format that's not necessarily the case you got to kind of give it all you got 13 you can give it all you got off the tee get to about those yellow stakes big right turn down this hallway ladies basket with the red band men's with the blue this lefty shot it's got to be a lot of turnover or just a lot of snap to keep it out of that right side bush the righty is probably going to attack right towards that bush that that Reed landed in so then it'll fade back to the left and give the good angle or Joel not doing that at all not advisable you can hear Joel must have slipped on the tee pad Drew here uncorking one Oof. Almost. Almost uncorking one. If that one gets back to flat and starts fading down that hill, I mean, he'd be pin high off the tee. And here is Hannum going high. Look at this thing. And he finds the right side. I guess we could call that the first cut. That's what Charlotte's version of it is, or Hornet's Nest anyway. But 
that's not too bad. He's going to be close enough. Try to make some fireworks happen. And there's Joel getting his punch out. Reed on the opposite side of the fairway here. Tucked against that right side. Going with a little cheeky line. It's all you need for par. Drew conceding that he's going to be bound to the same fate. He'll actually throw again here. Get to show off that little Annie shot to a hallway. <laughs> Read little cut roll at the end. Neither of those guys as close as they really want to be for that shot. Here's Hannum's third. Why not? Why not have it run? Big look here. Frescura for par. Yeah, outside the whole way. He knew it. Joel. Not too much wind. This should just be a standard strong bid. Give it a run. He's fighting for it. And those punches just, they land a little more heavily when you miss putts and you're just fighting for it. Drew a little strong on that uphill. It's the first uphill putt we've seen him miss. He's going to take a bogey. So will Joel Freeman. Austin Hannum sitting at one over par, but he's even for that Brand hole. First run, Millennium Plastic Scorpion. Let's see if I can get it up. The wind's kind of coming right to left just a touch. It might fall down mid flight. So. up on right. this one I'm going to try to see her a little lower to the ground see if I can get the pop up and fly real straight just a little bit of turn yeah baby huh. Woo. boy that thing gets it doesn't it Woo -hoo. Halfway there on this back nine, 14, 419 feet. This is a smooth hyzer, nothing too overstable for the righty backhand. Well, you're gonna find yourself down in those trees. Again, men playing to the slightly longer basket here. Same tee pad as the ladies. It's got to land soft. That's really the only trick. Otherwise this, uh, Flight shape and this distance shouldn't be a problem for all these players. Good shot there by Reed. Letting the slope kind of pull his disc down the hill. Didn't try to turn the corner too hard on the lefty. Joel, good idea, just a little high. That's the trick on that line for the forehand or the lefty. You've got to throw something overstable enough that it'll fight some of the way the hill's going to try to pull it. But if you throw it too high, then it'll still fade out. Nice. Drew here. That's perfect. Yeah, great job. Thank you. That's a birdie. 
It's a good shot. Again, speedy down that hill, so he finds the bottom of the gully. Gonna have some work to do to get that birdie. Hand him second. I'm not surprised again to see that forehand. You want to try to fight the hill a little bit. A lot of people feel like they have more control that way. Wow. He just floats them in. He's, it's almost the opposite of a Ricky Wysocki putt where it's like a lot of energy from the body and it's high with nose down. But watch here how Austin putts this. It's just the lift of the hand, nose up flight, and it just floats upward and sits softly into the chains. It's literally the inverse of a Wysocki putt. And it just goes to show you, you can make them any which way you draw it up as long as you practice. Huge putt there for Austin Hannum. The second one of the round we've seen. Good stick by Reed there. Again, testing that left side, that pro side. Keeping it in the basket. Going to the next hole. This is Drew for birdie. Yeah. Got it. Best result, but maybe not even the best putt that we just got to watch. Or tied for the best result, excuse me. Reed was also a birdie putt. Gibson, still the only person really looking at surviving right now. I mean, four holes left, and now they have the gauntlet. Another one of those holes that feels much longer than it plays. Here's the ladies' basket here. Men playing to the elevated one. One more set of goalposts to navigate. There's a Mando to keep you throwing up the gap or getting lucky through the right side somehow. Or getting lucky through the left side somehow. Yeah, that's not the way you want to start this hole. You have to make it. You really have to get to the kind of spider tree. I guess not really a spider tree. That little collection of trees that kind of looks like a spider tree. You've got to get there. See, if you do, even if you hit, it's not terrible. Joel's just, he's over it today. The emotion is gone. He's just like, there's... There's only a few holes left. It's tough. You feel for the guy. Drew, punchline. Right side. Still work to do if he wants to not take a bogey. Gauntlet takes no prisoners here. Reed looking for some fireworks. He's definitely going to need some help. He's one under par. Good lighthouse hit by Joel. Austin floats one up himself. And I don't, I'm not trying to be dismissive of any of these players. I mean, obviously, you're still fighting for pride. You still want to represent yourself your sponsor all that stuff <laughs> drew representing right there that is a clutch par save another great stick from austin as well i mean but overall when you look at the the scores the players are shooting to get into the next it, this is the last card to go off they know they're looking at their phones they know what the scenario is and that's why you see joel just he fought for a while. He was emotionally really invested in each shot, and it's just, it's kind of dead. You know, it, it's disappointing to come out and to want to really attack and make some of this money and then not be able to perform up to your expectations. And 
that's kind of the fun part of this format at the same time because after 15 comes this hole through that gap if that's not hard enough you're gonna drop down over a short amount of distance a steep slope fade to the left there is a little fairway up the left side reed's taking neither fairway what in the world all right we'll see where that one landed that's crazy colton montgomery nearly aced this hole during the weekend drew gibson says birdie looks good enough for me Hannum looks pure. Can it find that last gap? Pure enough. He's got a birdie look as well. Here's Joel. One for the fans. Come on. <laughs> oh, that's a tough kick there. He's found the no man's land between two fairways. Forehand roller down the left side. And then a 55 60 long there. Comebacker for par. Reed using his big frame to his advantage. Find that window. And there's a circle two bag on putt. Why not? Sometimes you gotta switch it up. just feeds it in there a birdie there for Austin uh, Austin <laughs> picking up Joel's disc on accident <laughs> that's a new kind of Raz I haven't seen that one before pick your Pick your card mate's disc up to razz them before they putt. Oh, the guy's pretty good natured about it. At the end of the day, as uh, disappointed as you see Joel is, as, as Drew gets to seven under par, and that's going to be a crucial number. He's right on the line here compared to what the other scores have come in at. Two more holes to do it, 17. It's very attackable, as you can see, setting up for that Heiser flip righty just to the gap here. And then another, you can go right side Heiser, outside in, or you can try to go up the gut, play it over the spine towards the um, questionably real rock formation. Yeah, I mean, even though these players are obviously disappointed in their performances, some of them, the good news is that they're still getting paid. All the players who played in the Tour Championship get a payout to some degree, so it feels pretty good to be invited, at least. And Austin just having some fun. Reed looking for the big impressive line here. Wow, and that's a good kickback. He's got a little bit of the corner and got a little help from that tree, or he might have been way deep. It was a powerful throw. Joel having a tough one, just trying to get through it. And we see there's Katrina Allen walking with Austin. We saw Vanessa Van Dyken caddying for Reed earlier. A 
both those ladies competing this weekend as well. There's a pretty good line. Rejected by the spine. Got to do some work if you want those desserts. Drew, forehand, roller. Terrible. Not so much the throw, but the result. Hamas checking on Drew's score for him. Or maybe his Instagram. One of the two. That should give him a par look. Reed second. Well, that's the way to make it a lefty hole there. Joel. That's what happens when you putt with a bag on, dude. It just doesn't go in. Good bid, though. Good touch there. Drew to stay at seven. All right. His chances are still alive. Barring catastrophe, Drew Gibson should be going on to the semifinals. Just going to need to par this next hole. Last hole of the day. Let's see if the guys have any fireworks left in them. Three of these guys. This is going to be the last throw of their competitive touring season right here drew gibson looking to fight to play one more day ladies pin there with the red and the birdie on it and the blue basket back here is the men's pin 486 feet downhill a little danger not too too much just crush one Yeah, it's, it's really the only danger on this hole, the overturned shot for either hand, either way you throw. The overturned shot kind of finds the edge of the rough. Just put it down in the mouth. True Gibson, does that say rock? It does say rock. I still think he's probably 30 short. With that one. Hand him here just showing off the roller game. Getting some work in. Use it as practice. He's inside circle too. Freeman to get CTP. All right, it's turning the right way. It's flattening. He is CTP. Great shot, Joel. Put a gallery in front of him. Drew. Gonna need a confident putt. Wow. Reed tickling some chains. Hannum, circle two. Wow. I mean, he just leans in and floats it one more time. Show this guy one more time on his putting style. I love it. The wrist flick, the nose up, the slide game. You know how your disc does get over that cage on those putts when it's nose up? I mean, just a little. You get to play tomorrow. Ooh. 
just a little bit of right side low corner for Drew. He was that close to going home. There's the bag on make, Joel, for... Oh, it's because it was for Birdie. Got it. Joel, good show, man. Tough, uh... Tough day for some of these guys. Reed getting two under par, showing some skills. Not quite enough to get it done to move on to the semifinals. Austin, despite his brilliant show of putting, had points today. Uh, unfortunately, it was just not quite enough. But yeah, he was four for six was Austin Hannum from circle two. Really impressive round. Seven down for Drew Gibson. Fantastic. He's going to find his way into the semifinals. Philo Brathwaite with that 10 down. That's the hot round of the event. Welcome Michael Johansson with the 8. And Drew Gibson and Chris Dickerson sliding to the semis. Despite the tie, Pro Tour points was the victory. Well, I hope you guys had some fun. I certainly did calling some golf. I'm going to be back for the semifinal rounds where you're going to see Drew, you're going to see Chris, you're going to see Michael Joe, and you're going to see Philo Brathwaite. Stick around. We'll see you soon.